Talked to my ego yesterday Confessed that I could use some space And that bruise still hurts My therapist said I should take Words out of my vocabulary Like what I deserve So I've been working on it but I'm still a work in progress Maybe there's a little gray in the black and white I fell somewhere between the lines I cut up and I lost my head I came undone playing with the threads Couldn't make the jump tied to the rope Get them both from all their highest hopes I don't know what everyone expects I just haven't got there yet It's too late to call it quit so I better live up to it. Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music again, hanging out in Nashville, Tennessee with my friend and amazing artist, songwriter, guitar player, singer, Sam Varga. How's it going? You got a new album, Shadow Work, that's coming out June 14th. Yes. Uh, we have links and stuff below for you to check it out. But in the meantime, we're going to chat, play some tunes, check out some of your guitars and get to know each other a little bit. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you, man. Looking yeah. forward to it. Me too. Who were your heroes like when you started playing music? Oh man, I was like... Um, like little emo in there? Tons of emo. So I was all uh, like all Guitar Hero stuff for like the longest time, I think. Love it. Uh, it was uh, ACDC TNT on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. That was like, what is that? And then I was <laughs> nice. all Angus, all Slash, and Metallica. And then one day, like my sister came home from college, and it was Census Fail, Seosin, Under Oath, and then I was just like off to the races. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's a good uh, arc of influences. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I also have to give props to uh, Lindsay Lohan in Freaky Friday because that was the movie that made me want to play guitar. That, because of the <laughs> guitar scene. She just ripped it. I feel like that. Like everyone always talks about. Um, like so many guitar heroes came from uh, Back to the Future. Yes. And so that was kind of like my Back to the Future. Like, oh, that teenager's being so cathartic on stage. Like, how awesome is that? Right, so Back to the Future's my, I'm Gen X, so that's yeah. my generation. Yeah. And uh, it's that, and then also the Crossroads movie. Oh, for sure. Because even- Machio? I, yeah, because I didn't play guitar during, you know, when that movie was out either. And I was just like, between Steve Vai and the stuff that Ralph Macchio's character is doing, I mean, it blew me away. But it, I, I didn't go, oh, I want to go get a guitar. It seemed like a magician, you know? Yeah, I mean, also with Steve Vai, it's like, how can you be like, oh, okay, I'm going to pick up guitar and instantly play like Steve Vai in Crossroads. Yeah. The first time I ever heard about that movie, I embarrassed myself so bad. I'll never forget, I was with my guitar teacher in Louisville, Kentucky, and he was like, man, have you ever like seen Crossroads? You're like Britney Spears? I was just like, the Britney Spears movie? Because <laughs> it was 2005, and like I had no reference. He was like, you didn't just say that. And I was like, what is it? <laughs> Ralph Macchio, Steve Vai. I was like, who are these people? <laughs> as soon as you said the guitar hero, hero thing, like I like felt like I won the lottery as a guitar teacher. And before YouTube and everything, I was yeah. a, you know teaching guitar lessons to kids, well, everybody, but lots of kids. And I still remember Guitar Hero blowing up. And the next thing I knew, I was going in to teach a little kid and they would ask to learn like Mississippi Queen. Yeah. That's the one that I'm always like, I still remember it so well because I was like, how do you know that song? song? It's like your parents played that song for you or something? And Senses Fail made it onto the same Guitar Hero. Amazing. So I was just like, this is perfect for me. But everyone always kicked my ass at Guitar Hero and it was so embarrassing because it was like the one thing I could do. But I was terrible at Guitar Hero. Well, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Smile and wave while I crash and burn. Like when known a writer back from hell I pull it off, I wear it well If this is triage, then I guess I'll wait my turn La 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 Don't mean to be an inconvenience No big deal It's just some love Dying, but whatever works for you Stitch me up with something clever I'm always fine, but never better
nine TikToks last night and I was so burnt out. Did you post them all? No, 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 no. I'm so you you made some that you're gonna spread out. I'm trying to I'm trying to batch them all. But, I mean, TikTok was brutal for me for a long time. Uh, but you know, like after getting the project together and realizing, like, hey, this thing has to eat, it was like a lot easier to get into like the mood to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of those TikToks that you made? Oh like, man, you playing. Uh, there's a couple of me playing, but most of them like. So the next single is called Jim Carrey. And so uh, I like got like 150 bucks worth of Jim Carrey costumes off of Amazon. And I was like, okay, I just need someone to put up a camera right here and keep it in the exact same spot and I'll take care of the rest. So it's like five Jim Carrey characters, like all doing a run through of the song. To your music. To, to your, the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many were they? Don't tell me which ones, but tell me how many costumes. Five. Okay, so there was five. So one is definitely Dumb and Dumber. Did you put a like gaff on your? It was the orange tux, which is oh. also, which is also my derby outfit. Okay, for so this that's <laughs> so that's for I'm thinking um, cable guy. No, no? cable okay. guy wasn't in there. Okay, well definitely Ace Ventura. Two two version. So, right, so you got like a Hawaiian shirt. A Hawaiian shirt, two two big boots. Let's see. I mean, I want to say the mask. Mask had to be in there. So what'd you do for the mask? Uh, well, the the actual mask that they I got on Amazon was so atrocious that I couldn't do it. So it was just the orange uh, Coco Banna, the yellow Coco Banna outfit. Yeah, but no green makeup anyway? No green makeup. Took care of that on the next character though. Oh, okay, the uh, Grinch. Boom, crushed it, <laughs> crushed it. So see me make an absolute fool of myself on TikTok being Jim Carrey. So it how'd you do the Grinch? Oh, the Grinch costume was fantastic. There's like a... Oh, it was to a T. Did, did that cover them all? Did we... Or is yeah, there he one crushed missing? it. You got it. Okay. Oh wait, there is one, but it's a uh, deep cut. Mm. Jim Carrey. Oh, uh, Spotless Mind. Yeah. Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, Spotless Joel from Mind. Spotless Mind. So that Joel was a character I used for myself for what? the song, dude. <laughs> yeah. Can you put a little award with like like confetti, like <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I did pretty good. I think he crushed Damn. it. Damn. Everything you're describing right now, that that took some work. It did. That was like a. Full on. It was a day. Gig. It was a day. Just trying to get, like you said, like you know what I'm talking about, like trying to get content that you are like passionate about and excited about. Because if you're putting out stuff to whether you're promoting your music, promoting yourself that you don't believe in mm -hmm. or that was arduous to do, then it's just like so like palpable to the audience. And it just becomes draining. So finding a way to get excited about it and doing what you love. Yeah. Now I do have to tell you the the universal laws of TikTok says that that clip's not gonna do well because you work too hard on it. Yeah, it can confirm. Can <laughs> I'm, sitting, I'm sitting at like a solid 400 views and I'm like, it's okay, I still love it. No, there's something, that, it's like almost like the universe knows. I learned a lesson when I was seven table with mom and dad You can stop a fight right in its tracks if You make everyone laugh And it felt safe to be the punchline A role that I was born to play I sold my soul out for the smiles I guess I always loved the stage If something ever scared me I'd do my best Jim Carrey I'd go run and get my mask Make everybody happy they look mono hands Throw myself down Stairs. Turns out nobody knows how to take a joke. And it got old when I got older. I never learned to drop the act. Now I oh, yeah. woke up like it's my profession. 
If I'm the first to call me worthless It doesn't hurt as bad Truth is I'm just some stupid kid Talking out of his ass If something ever scared me I'd do my best Jim Carrey I'd go run and get my mask Make everybody happy Hey, look, mono hands Throw myself down the stairs Turns out nobody knows Well, how to take a joke scared me. I'd do my best Jim Carrey. Well, I'd go run and get my mask. Make everybody happy. Ha 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 ha. He's laughing at me. Ha 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 ha. I'm the death of the party. You know, he wrote a check to himself. Do you know about that? For $10 million. Yeah, he wrote a check to himself for $10 million, you know, with a little note for like... Act acting services rendered or something yes, like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it was meant, and he sat at the Hollywood sign yeah. with the check, you know, visualizing and everything. And it came happened. true, but I, you know, there's gotta be millions of people that do that, that don't make it. So. He's really good at it. <laughs> right, really but you know what I mean? So that's it. what I'm saying, like, you can't just like, write yourself a check for $10 million no. and, uh, no. and expect one to appear. But I think it's related to the other things of his drive and ambition and, for and sure. you know, also just that like not giving up and I'm fascinated by it, but I don't say it's like magic or the universe or anything, but it's definitely related to like belief not giving up, perseverance. Absolutely. Those little things might help like you get by a little bit when you're feeling discouraged, possibly. I think it's like, you know, you're just, you're latching onto a frequency, right? And you're, you're just kind of attuning yourself to the things that you want. And it's almost like you can, I think you can call it a million different things, manifestation, like whether you're doing it like with crystals and Palo Santo or you're like really grinding or astrology it Astrology or- Exactly. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like whenever you just, you're whenever you, get your mind ready to look for things. Like whenever you're telling yourself you're doing this, then you're more aware of the opportunities, you're more in line with it, you're living closer to it. And then it all kind of snowballs. My favorite thing Jim Carrey ever said, which was actually a really influential for me, was I was in college and I was, uh, had kind of quit doing music, which is crazy because I moved to Austin and I couldn't just, I don't know what it was about the scene. It wasn't like as welcoming as I thought it was gonna be. There wasn't a lot of room for like singer songwriter there is, uh, you know, very, very hip whenever I was there. But I was not playing guitar. I was not writing songs. And, and that was still my dream. And I watched Jim Carrey's commencement speech. And he has a line in there where he's talking about his dad who uh, wanted to be a comedian, but, or a saxophone player. I can't remember which one it was. And uh, he decided to take the safe route and became an accountant. And then lost he lost his, his job. job yeah. And they became homeless. So it's like if you can fail at doing what you don't want to do, you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. It's great. So it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go like fail big at this. And then did like an internship after college and then moved straight to Nashville. Like whenever I was getting ready to do this record, I was trying to like, you know, like creatively lift weight. So I was hitting like Rick Rubin's book and then like Julia Cameron's like the artist way and stuff like that. And there's just this like overarching theme through both of those, and a lot of people who will get into the science of creativity, which I think is hilarious, um, which is like you are, you're invited to the process, you're not invited to the outcome, and if you're outcome driven, it just like zaps the creativity. And like you said, like you'll never know what it is, and you just have to remember like to show up every day, like give the muses a little nod, say hey, thank you, what's up, and then just play. And if you're just playing, then like, because it's like your inner child, right? Is like yeah. the creative part, not like the analytical, this must go viral that makes cool stuff happen. What's your biggest TikTok then? First one was a uh, Olivia Rodrigo cover 
because I heard Good For You and I was like, that's a pop punk song, you sneak. And then <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. Just skyrocketed the first day. It's like I got like most of my followers from that. It was absurd. It sounds it was like, like you should probably do a Taylor Swift one. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, and then it was like, like more than 10,000 pre-saves. It was so cool. And then I had a couple that were kind of viral that about like songs I was writing and doing sketches and releases. But the next one that went really big was I was in LA at the uh, that Star Wars cantina on the strip. Scum and Villainy. Scum and Villainy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was karaoke night. And uh, I was like, what do I get up there and do? Like, I haven't done like karaoke in a long time. I was like, I really want to do Crazy by Buck Cherry. Nice. But I was like, I just don't know how that's going to go over in LA. So the bartender was like, why don't you just hold up a sign that says, I swear to God, I'm a feminist, and then go <laughs> do it. So I just have my phone, like, holding, I swear to God, I'm a feminist, singing crazy <laughs> And then everyone, like, just ate it up, and then that, like, had a million views the next day. Uh, well, that just goes to show you that, you know, we, we, there, the science of creativity is still not uh, deciphered. Deciphered, <laughs> not at all. You pretty big Wilco fan? Yeah. I found Wilco through this band, uh, this band, they're not small at all, uh, My Morning Jacket. I grew up in Kentucky and my fifth grade teacher, uh, who ended up being my sixth grade teacher as well, was married to Patrick the drummer. And right whenever I learned guitar, like having someone like that in my life who was so encouraging, she was so great too, to music, to creativity, and like had all this like music knowledge. They came to like my school of rock shows and we're like so supportive and like I'm still like riding like the wave of what Bridget and Patrick told me whenever I was in fifth grade. Awesome. Like just like they made music so simple. It was like, how do you like, I think I like even asked Patrick one time, I was like, how do I, you know, become a famous rock star like you, Patrick? <laughs> and he was like, show up to your gigs on time make sure you play like the correct set time. Always be respectful to your sound guys, like work your ass off. And I was like, which is not the answer like a fifth grader wants like, to that question. Yeah. And then you come to Nashville and you're just like, yeah, that, that is like the, the work ethic of it was so important and changed everything. Well, I Back home they think I'm lucky, but I'm a long way from Kentucky. When you leave, it's like time stops. If you change, then you forgot who you are and where you came from. Big shot, what are you ashamed of? I just wanted to be better than me at 19. Maybe there's a little gray in the black and white. I fell somewhere between the lines. I cut up when I lost my head. I came undone playing with the threads. Couldn't make the jump tied to the rope. I just haven't got there yet It's too late to call it quits So I better live up to it If I knew I would miss the mark Would it aim tired from the start So if I make it halfway there At least I made it somewhere If I knew that my deck was stacked Could have kept the wheels on track Wouldn't bluff with the winning hand Punk rock band All right, Sam Varga, is this a, a Martin D28? It is. I don't regret going to college, but it may not have been like the best thing for what I wanted to do. So the story of this guitar is super, super special. This is a 1958 D28, and uh, I was <laughs> pledging a frat. And I was at the University of Kentucky, and um, I was like in the blue blazer, white shirt, like pin and everything, and like still had my long hair. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I just, like, like six months ago, I was in basements, <laughs> like doing like guitar la hoops and moshing, and like now I'm in this jacket. And I was like, dude, you need to go play a fucking guitar. <laughs> So I just Googled like the closest uh, guitar shop to me and it's a Martin Museum. And so you walk into the one side and it's all these D45s. It's got something you know, Johnny Cash played. It's got something uh, 
you know, that Crosby and Stills and Nash had. Um, and I was like, I am not going to ask to play those because that will only break my heart. But they had a, on the other side of the store, which is more the retail store, they had this. And I'd seen it online. I wanted to go check it out. And I remember sitting down with it and like taking a breath before I strummed it. I was like, please suck. And just like, I was like, damn it. And I spent like two hours with this guitar that day. And, this this uh, one right here. This one. And I was like, I don't, I don't collect guitars the same way that most people do. Um, I kind of treat like, like girlfriends, like I have to break up with one before I can get another one. <laughs> and so I took the guitars that I had then at the time, and then uh, I think like one of two, I think my dad threw in like his T5 at the time. And Taylor, yeah. electric acoustic, yeah. And uh, Great dad guitar. Great dad guitar. And I sold like some of my 80s rockers, like Ibanez's and stuff like that. I think I had like a Paul Gilbert, Road Flare Red, RG550, and then like a one from the 80s that was purple. And I got this and I have no regrets whatsoever because I play this like every single day. It's on every single record. I love it whenever it gets the, uh, the strings just get a little dead on it. It's so good for recording. So D28, what year is it from? 58. Wow. Yeah. Man. 58. The thing is, like, I also love like doing dag out with this guitar because you can just have so much fun. It's also it's such a versatile tuning, so you have all of this like like the stuff I was playing from live up to it. It's just so like angelic. And then like if you just adjust your position by like one, like I'll do it up here because I like the sound of it. But. You just get so swampy and so yeah. enjoy back and forth so much. So yeah, this one, uh, this one I'll definitely never let go of. This one's not really mine, but it's on loan. <laughs> uh, Is that for, a Martin too? For forever, yes. A parlor so, guitar? Uh, my dad had a friend that he was helping out and he was a big bluegrass player in Kentucky. And he invited my dad to come out to check out his shop. And uh, he was really old at the time. Um, his name was uh, Bill Barney, and I never got to meet him, and I always regret that, because um, I get to play his instruments all the time. But he had just a garage full of the most beautiful, because bluegrass players like know their acoustics, right? It's the greatest Gibsons, the greatest Martins, are all old. But so he had this, and this is a 1886 Martin Parlor. And you can tell that it's just been like capo, to, the bejeebus. Yes, it has. And uh, it has all the ivory tuners, say for this one. Um, rosewood, I think the whole thing's actually rosewood. But yeah, and it has the, uh, the actual slotted headstock before they did it just for fun. Like this is actually how they set them up. And so this is what I would, I use now for like, uh, like when I want that Phoebe Bridgers, like uh, rubber bridge, instead of doing the rubber, it's just like. <laughs> But it's great, it's, it's so understated and I love it. But yeah, so he, my dad was kind of, he's a great finger picker. He would just always sing with my mom. Uh, but he like loved guitars and collected them. So whenever I got into it, we got to have so much fun. And there's been uh, you know, so many guitars that have come through our house and it's just interesting to uh, you know, see. Very fortunate. So when did you first learn guitar for real then? Uh, I was 10. I was 10, I was in fourth grade. It was great and I picked it up really fast. And it was the first thing that as a kid I was good at other than shooting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kentucky boy. <laughs> um, and so I, but I was picking all this up really, really fast. And the next thing I know I'm getting in bands and I was normally the best guitar player in the band. Um, but then as I started getting into more serious bands, it became apparent that like, I was also the best singer and then I fell in love with songwriting, so then I was writing the songs, and then I was like, 
okay, you can't be the lead guitar player, singer, and songwriter. So, and then I met an amazing guitar player in high school uh, named Nick. Um, he's one of my best friends. He has perfect pitch. Cannot compete with that, right? Um, so, kind of the shredding and like, uh, you know, guitar technique really went to the wayside for me, and I went into songwriting. Like, I, from a tech technical standpoint, I was so much better at 16 than I am right now. <laughs> uh, but you know, I started just going mostly acoustic and uh, I call myself like a fake guitar player. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm all spinal. I could not tell you what I'm doing. Uh, but open tunings, that was really big with the emo guys. So I kind of teetered towards songwriting and away from like shredding. Do you remember the first thing you ever learned on guitar? I think. <laughs> That'd be it, right? Yeah, that's tricky though. What's Louie Louie? Oh, well, that's a big, uh... That's what it was. That was the first... I'm wrong okay. too. <laughs> well, you play... Where, where are you in it? I'll find it. I think I'm half step down. A big piece of theory is that that... That chord's minor, the yeah. third chord. And my guitar teacher, Chris, was just on there talking about, you know, because a lot of times you'd think it is. Which a lot of other songs were. Wow, okay. Yes. But Louie Louie, it's that minor. It's the minor. I think that's why my guitar teacher taught it to me first, was because like, I could play like four songs instantly. But yeah, first song was Louie Louie. Love it. This was similar to uh, the... Um, yeah, it looks very vintage. The D28 Right story. down to it saying Les Paul. Yes, so it's kind of a Frankenstein. I got this from Carter's. I had always wanted a 67 SG. Like, just, I don't know how I got it in my head. It was like, it was not the earlier models, but it also wasn't where they kind of teeter off and get the baseball necks, and it still had the, uh, the bat wing pickups on, uh, bat wing pick guard. So it's like 67, that's my sweet spot, right? This goes online and it says 6267. And I'm like, pray tell, what <laughs> does that mean? Um, and I go in and I'm talking to Keith about it and it's like, someone broke their 62 and they sent it into Gibson and they put it on the 67 body. So original neck, headstock, Les Paul, super sick, uh, tremolo, and then the PAFs. So it's like 67 with PAFs. Like I had a uh, 335 at the time, which was the last of the Memphis year is 2019. I don't know what it was about that particular model year. It was so warm. So I had to like dime all of my uh, pedals and amps just to get it to kind of like get that emo crunchy thing out of it. So I was like, okay, I can go. And then I had like a Robbie Krieger SG run that they did that looked exactly like this. So I was like, okay, well, that one can go too. But then like same thing, it walked in like traded for for this. It's amazing. It's just, you can't duplicate like OG PAFs, but it sounds magnificent. Well, dude, you got a nice collect. I mean, the, you're covering a lot of ground with those guitars. I'm very, very lucky. Very, yeah. very lucky. Yeah, you have any others at home? Do you have a massive guitar collection or not really? No, I mean, like, like I said, I kind of <laughs> break up with guitars to get new ones, so I'm not like just amassing a collection. But at home, I have my Gibson J45 Custom is my uh, playing out guitar, that's what I mainly use. And then a Jack Daniels PV, which sounds crazy, mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking, but like, it's a PV, but it's kind of based off those, uh, that run they did where they looked a lot like the Music Men. Uh-huh. Would that be plural or would you just call them Music Mans? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. and, but then I put uh, Slash's Alnico 2 pickups in it, and it's just like one, it's like one of those guitars you always have that's like your first guitar, that there's something magic about it where it always does what you want it to, and it never goes out of tune. You're just like, I'm dropping, <laughs> dropping a lot of money like when there's just like this guy. Like the What's the Jack that, Daniels part of it? It's black with the like, uh, kind of orange, just silver flame top on it, which breaks up really, really cool. So it's kind of like smoke. Its truss rod cover is a Jack Daniels barrel. And then it's uh, knobs, uh, say old number seven on it. <laughs> and God love that guitar for still being here because I have hula hooped that thing over my <laughs> shoulder so much. Real quick, you have a new album coming out I in do. June? June yes. 14th. June 14th. And what's the album called again? Shadow Work. Shadow Work. Yeah. Nice. 
Well, uh, we're all looking forward to that. Thank you. We're going to leave much. links below for all your awesome. socials, the album, you know, any any other things that you you know want people to know about. We will have in the link below. And um, just want to thank you again, Sam Varga, for coming. Thank you so and, much. And uh, that was that was really fun, man. Getting Lots to know, getting to you know, getting to know you a little better. We yeah. didn't really know each other until this session, which in some ways is more fun. Absolutely. Because um, we can discover live on air. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah.